thank you for joining us. And today we just want to um, really just experience a, a wonderful story of what is happening at the Healing Den uh, Food Bank. Uh, a story that I really found fascinating in my discussions with uh, Pastor Tudor over the past few weeks. Um, so I actually have a, um, a video to show. That's what I wanted to start with, but I think I'm going to probably delay that a bit uh, so that perhaps the people who uh, join us uh, later can uh, benefit from uh, that, that video. So, um, so welcome. Uh, this is something that I run uh, often and again. It's called Updates Available and um, pretty much for the benefits of people in ministry for pastors and, and, and ministers. So welcome. And we're just going to do this for about an hour. And I know that it promises to be um, an amazing time. All right, so let's uh, dive straight into it. We'll show, we'll show that video later, which basically shows the operations of um, of the Healing Day Food Bank. But let me start out. Uh, Pastor, today, a few days ago, we were, you know, just talking about how this whole thing, you know, started. You know, and I found it interesting. You know, uh, what what happened in Cambridge. So I was wondering if you could just. <laughs> You know, share, share that with us, you know, and, um, you know, I think it's a wonderful experience and I think it would encourage somebody out there. Yes. Thank you very much, Pastor Wally. And um, I'm viewers, thank you so much. I want to deeply appreciate this opportunity to come across to you and to share this experience with you. And um, I know that in the way that it has always inspired me, it was so inspired in different ways somehow. Now, I think the, the issue about the beginning of the Hilden Food Bank stems from one of those stories that you just more or less stumble about. You stumble on, you never plan for it. 2009, it was, and um, myself and my wife, Toy, we were visiting um, my brother-in-law, um, who was sadly quite very ill then, in Suffolk, in Cambridgeshire, in, in England. And uh, we went to visit him. Um, one of those times that we saw him last. And um, he sadly passed away a few months after. However, we went there to visit him. And then as we were rounding up our visit after staying for about three, four hours, it was time to go. And we stood at their door, just the entrance of the door. And we're just more or less saying bye-byes again, bye-byes again, and then um, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and within the space of the time, we noticed a little girl run across the road in front of their house, wearing a t-shirt, branded, foot bag. And when I saw that image of the girl, it registered in my head, I didn't know what for, but I, I heard later on in my spirit, I heard God said, take note of that picture I just showed you, because we're going to be talking about it later on. And then I asked my brother-in-law, who was that little girl I saw that just ran across the road a few minutes ago? And he said, oh, this is um, a project that they run in Suffolk, in their church, in their area. They collect food from the supermarket, from people on the streets, mm -hmm. and then they keep it and then use it to serve people who don't have food to eat. Right. And he explained that, and I had never heard of that in the, you know, in the time that I've been in the UK. Mm -hmm. So... As soon as I heard that, I heard, take that project to London and we're going to be starting it and it's going to be, become part of the vehicle of revival in the next, I mean, the next fair of event. Mm -hmm. So I came to London overnight. I went on Google, Trust Google. I found Food Bank in Salisbury um, in England where they were dead, when they were dead established. I spoke with a gentleman, Jeremy, who said to me, yeah, 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 told me the story. And the rest is history. We are ready to meet up. And he decided to come. He said to me that he's heard it before that people wanted to start the project, but they always say there is, there is, um, it's too, it's too cumbersome to run. Okay. It's too expensive to, 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 to commit to. Right. And then it involves a lot of resources. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So he didn't take it serious because the call was coming from London. He said, London mm-hmm. people have three things against it. They don't think, as much as they want to do it, they don't think there are hungry people in London. Mm-hmm. They don't think that they can fund it and they don't think they have the human resources. Mm-hmm. So I said to him that, well, I think um, I heard God's witness in my spirit to say, come and look for it. And that is why I'm asking him to um, um, let us talk about it today. So he said that is a, dip, a bit different because he's never had that before. So we talked about it and we are ready to meet up. He came over and then we talked about it and the rest is history. We have the Illidan Food Bank started about a month later on in London and became the first food bank in London. And that was uh, 2009. That was 2000, March 2009. It's oh, about, I mean, interesting. I, that's I mean, 12 years now. <laughs> 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 wow, wow, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even realize the, I mean, the coincidence in terms of, um, you know, the, the anniversary. So what I'm going to do now, um, we're going to take a break and I think um, it's a good time to show that video. And then we'll basically ask um, a few questions um, at the back of, of viewing that video. So I will just you know, share that, that screen now. And... Uh, yeah, so we just we just get to watch this. Okay. Hi, my name is Vine Daniels, and I work with the Hillenin Food Bank. Now, from statistics that we have, it said that seven out of ten families go without food at some point or the other. This is one of the reasons why we need food banks in this nation. I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous and it sounds a little bit, you know, disheartening to know that we need food banks in a country like this. But the truth is, we do need these food banks. Because people are going hungry, people are going without food on a day-to-day basis. Children are going to schools without food in the morning, coming back home not knowing what to eat. Some people have gone without food during festival periods, during Christmas periods. I'm going to show you a little bit about the food bank and how we operate and how the the Hillendian Food Bank has had a great impact upon the whole community and the society as general. Come with me. Now, this is what we call the sorting area. Um, People from the community donate a lot of food. And, um, you know, from different places, we get food from some communities, people on the streets put food together. And so when the food comes in like this, we bring it over here and we get it sorted. Now when, we say, when I say sorted, what I mean is that the food gets put into different categories in which they belong, and the food needs to be dated so we know the ones that are going out of date soon so we can use them, and the ones that can stay for long. And that's what we're doing here. So this is the bagging area where we put together the food parcels that go out. We've got three categories of food parcels. We've got the singles, the couples, and the families. A single parcel is just for a single person. The couples is for a couple, like it indicates. And the family is for a family of probably three or four people. Now, when it gets to a family of more than four people, we give out what we call uh, a large family parcel. Now, I'm going to hand over to Wendy, who's going to tell us more about what happens here. Oh, oh, lovely. Hi, um, so up here what we do is we pack all the bags and like Brian just said, singles, couples or family bags and it depends on how many bags each person has and then we go around the wall and then you can see, possibly if you zoom in on here that there's the different things that each family can have and each couples and singles Uh, we make them all up, pop them into the rooms and then the gentleman can come along, take the bags and take them out for delivery and that's what we do up here I'm just going to show you some of our some of the, some of the places where we store some of the food. Like you know, this is the bagging area. Now in here, we have all the pasta that we store. All this pasta, as you can see, they've got dates on them and all that. And in this room, we have in this room we have the pasta. We've got a little bit of pasta. And over there we've got the cereals, and over here we have what we call the treats. And we've also got some bags here. Now all, this up, all the operations of the food bank is done by volunteers. 
And I'm gonna hand us over to our volunteer coordinator who's gonna tell us a little bit more about the food bank. Uh, her name is Sarah Jane. Thank you, Vine. Hi, I'm Sarah Jane. I'm the volunteer coordinator. And when we went into lockdown at the end of March, uh, we realized that all the regular OAP volunteers had to shield at home. So we had to do a massive recruitment of volunteers across the Hillingdon community. Um, and we did that using Facebook, posts, next door posts, and it's been a massive effort and the community have come together all across Hillingdon. Um, people from, uh, we've had teachers, we've had uh, volunteers from local businesses, um, all across the spectrum. Um, people have come together to support the food bank and give up their time to um, date the food and pack the food and also deliver the food to individual households across the borough. And the need has doubled since we went into lockdown and so we've constantly had to recruit volunteers. Um, and there, it's gone in waves because obviously some volunteers were furloughed and were able to give up their time and then they went back to work. And then we had the mums who were able to give up their time but then they had to stay home and homeschool the children. So we're constantly trying to recruit new volunteers um, to support us because the need keeps growing. That was, uh, for, for me, that, that was an eye-opener, really. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I lived in Nigeria for a long time. I only just moved to the UK. and. Um, I mean, in many in many respects, when we talk about maybe inter, intervening in helping the hungry, um, what we see is just in terms of maybe just handing out packs, handing out breakfast, handing out lunch, you know. And uh, sometimes there's usually a problem with, you know, sustainability of those kind of things. And first of all, I want to, I mean, on behalf of the Healing Food Bank, thank all the volunteers. I think it's an amazing job. That they're doing, and which brings me to the question: How how do you um, how, how do you get these volunteers? How do you get them on board? You know, um, it would be nice to just know how that happens. I think um, I, I cannot thank the volunteers enough um, mm -hmm. because it's good to have a good idea. Mm -hmm. One thing is to have a good idea. The second thing is to have people who are willing and ready to back up that idea to succeed. Right. And I want to say that I am immensely thankful to the volunteers who have come on board ever since the first day we rolled out the trolley in the supermarket, mm -hmm. um, right in the middle of Oxbridge town to collect the right. food myself and the mayor of the of of of, of Ealing, And we're rolling out the and we've seen so many times, like Sarah Jane mentioned, people have volunteered their time to come and be part of this project. Mm. The good thing is that the project speaks for itself. Mm. We have people who have been benefited through this project at some point in time, mm. and they have returned to come and be volunteers to come and serve other people because they, they came and they were they, they could not believe that they could be handed over food in the city of London, on the street of London, without having to pay anything. So when they see that happen to them at their most difficult times, they always make up their mind that when I'm sorted out, when I'm ready, I will return to come and give. We have seen people with word of mouth directly recommending people to say, go and give your, your time, go and give effort, and it has always been a massive success and a massive help to get this going. Amazing. So that's, that's I mean, and, and I, I think I love that model. So that's really a case of, you know, I was blessed and yep. that is now my turn to be a blessing. Absolutely. I think that 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 is really, really amazing. Now, um, you and I, I mean, um, when we're talking about this a couple of weeks ago, you, you had mentioned a couple of challenges. I know that there are probably some of those challenges that you will not 
be at liberty to <laughs> to share you know this forum. But you know, if if you may, maybe if you could share one or two, you know, basically just to encourage people who have this idea, right, to do something good. Uh, but we all know that sometimes we we have ideas, but ideas just die out. Okay, so um, I like to just share. You know one or two challenges that you faced and also how you overcame those challenges and um so in order for us to experience what we are uh, we're talking about today i think um the the first the first thing I'm, i want to say about that is there wouldn't be the healing in food bank today if we had listened to people around us there mm. because at the time that god gave this vision for us in 2009 if you remember then clearly we were not in any kind. In fact, it was the tail end of the boom time of right. the night because everything was going on so good. Mm. Um, the economy was buoyant. We were we have not yet got into the the the, the financial crisis that happened in 2010. Mm. So was God preparing us for what was going to happen in 2010 mm. when He said to us, "Get this project started." Because at that time, all the people who heard that we we're going to start that project then said we don't need it, especially mm -hmm. in the a place like Oxbridge, um, is a is a buoyant town, is a retiree area where there was there was a lot of jobs, a lot of people who were well to do. So we don't really, literally, we don't need the food bank. But when God speaks to us or had spoken to us then, it was in preparation for what was going to happen. And I tell you, we started it in, in, in March in exactly 100 days time from when we started it. Right. Credit crunch happened. Mm -hmm. And we started, we started seeing people losing their jobs. We started mm -hmm. people being fired from their job, being, being, told, to, being told to go home. Mm -hmm. People started looking at a very, a very big challenge of mm -hmm. sustainability of families they were all together good before. So mm -hmm. I tell you that if you have a vision and God has spoken to you about it, you must protect that vision from those who are going to say to you with the facts that are available that you don't need to do it, right. that it was unnecessary. Because you know when God speaks to you, it's not because of what you can see, but it's because of what is far ahead that you yeah. cannot see. Probably people around you cannot see. So mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that we responded and God gave us the grace and the faith to go ahead and to do it in obedience. And here is the results today. Mm. If I also look at the fact that another challenge that we have faced over the years is the um, ability to sustain it in terms right. of um, yeah. finances, in terms of human resources. Mm. And um, I cannot continue to go back. I cannot do enough going back to the area of human resources, the volunteers. The, the volunteers are the nerve of this project. Mm -hmm. They are the one, I mean, and when you see the volunteers working in the warehouse and across the other nine distribution centers that we have across the borough, right. you think they are paid to do this job. They do mm -hmm. it conscientiously. They do it with so much vigor, with so much commitment. Yeah. They are doing it as, I mean, they were, we saw people who will leave their normal job, make mm -hmm. out time and come and do some time at the food bank because they think it is the best they could do mm. to support people who needed it. And I think God helping us to overcome those challenges. I mean, we have seen time. I mean, when the, when the lockdown started, like Sarah Jane mentioned earlier on, we lost all our old age people mm. in like literally two days because the government said to them, they must go away shielding. Mm -hmm. And 90% of our volunteers vermoosed in, in two days. Mm -hmm. And we have about 5,000 kilos of food, wow. five, five tons of food in our care. And how do we get it out to people? We have to depend on God helping us to strategically raise new volunteers to take on this project and then to, to sustain it over mm -hmm. these difficult times. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, so... Uh, <laughs> Really, really amazing. I, I think um, you you really had you really have um, the I mean a really uh, a good fortune of being able to get you know new volunteers whilst um, you know the other folk had to go shield during the pandemic. And still talking about the pandemic, really, I, I wanted to just 
you know, shed some light on how, you know, I mean, the Healing Food Bank has been um, the impact that it had during during this uh, pandemic. You know, um, what, what was it like? Um, one, one of the things that excited me most in 2020 was the fact that the Healing Food Bank was in operation mm. because it actually served as a as is, as it were, as a place of succor and a right. place of help for so many people who were at that point in time had nothing to do. We have people who were shielding. We have people who have lost their jobs. We have people who, for maybe they were sick and they were in their homes, they could not go out to shop by mm. themselves. And some of them, they have actually been made mandatorily to be at home and not go out. Mm. All of those people had to depend on somewhere for food to come to them. Some of them can afford getting food, but they cannot go and get it. Wow, the wow. Bank mm. became the safe net for them. Mm. And one of the things that God helped us to do then, because the virus was out there and we had to totally um, go on to a zero contact um, policy whereby we do not welcome people to come. Mm -hmm. We have to actually strategically begin to deliver the food to people in their mm -hmm. houses. Mm -hmm. So the Hilden Food Bank made a very important impact in the way that we were able to reach out to people who were genuinely going through very trying time, not only mentally or physically or financially, but because the virus was really doing a lot of damage to human relationship and so on. So the mm -hmm. Illini Food Bank was able to serve them and reach out to them in a way that they were able at least to have some measure of sustenance and some measure of hope for the future. So it was it was really very, not to talk of the numbers of people, I mean, we're, we're serving, um, I mean, hundreds of people mm. before the lockdown. Yes. And when the lockdown started, we found out that, I mean, Sarah Jean was saying it doubles, it actually quadrupled Mm. During the peak, during the peak of the lockdown, because mm. everything dependent on us, and we actually got, um, re, I mean, we got we got uh, contacted by the by the borough and the and the council to say we want you to come and actually do some work for us, and mm. the food bank was adopted at that point as a project for the policy distribution of food in, in our borough and in our community as a whole, and that was a big a big plus and a big recommendation that we have yeah. served. Mm, amazing. So, I mean, I, I mean, if, is it possible for you to share like an idea of how many? I, I know you have. I mean, when I was when I was walking through the the food bank the other day, I mean, we had packs for singles, we had packs for couples, and then we had packs for um, big families, maybe families of uh, three or four. I mean, of five, five and above. I mean, could you give us a sense of? how many people you typically reach out to maybe in a month? I mean, maybe how many singles, how many couples, or how many? I mean, I, I think the best, way, the best way to look at it, in, um, I was just, just before we went on broadcasting, I just mm. went, the latest report right. that we just got, this week gone, that is the week of the 1st to the 5th of March. Yes. And in all of that week, we're able to serve 220 households, mm. 220 door households well wow. have to depend on the food bank mm. and amongst this we have about 86 families mm. uh, um, either small or large families mm. we have about 34 um couples which right. is a husband and wife mm. and then we have um, a total of um 100 singles which mm. is a uh, 100 single family so if you, if you compete that together we're, we're looking at um in the in the region of about 500 to 600 yeah. people at mm. count mm. that was in within that week alone. And that's so a week, yeah. That is a week. That is within yes. a week. So yeah. if it comes that into what it's, it, it actually goes on within the month or yeah. a series of times, we said that we have a lot of numbers of people mm. who rely on the to have a sustenance. Wow. Wow. Okay, so... Um, Walking through walking through the food bank the other day, um, uh, I mean, my, my own mind was just blown because I, I started to see how many things that had to come to play, not just in terms of the volunteers now who are doing an amazing job, but also in terms of, I mean, even the food itself. 
So, I mean, even, even to things like the, the shopping bags, you know, you have to have a, as many shopping bags. So it wasn't as though um, it was the people who were benefiting that would bring their shopping bags. So you had the shopping bags, you had lots of pasta, you had juices, you had, you know, canned foods. So how do you, um, how, how do you source all these things? I mean, how do they all, how do they all come together? What kind of partnerships and collaborations? I know you, you I mean, you've talked about the collaboration with the, the, the borough. But, but then, I mean, how, I'm sure they're not the only ones who are also who are doing this, but then the other parties as well that you're involved with. So just run us through um, this, this sense of collaboration that, um, that you have going for you. I think one, one of the very important thing that we do with the food bank, or try to achieve with the food bank, right. is avoid in any way stigmatizing the people, the clients who benefit from the food bank. We try as much as possible to not, not to not let them feel as though they are begging or they are being they are being given handout. Mm. So that is what is behind the 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 policy of using um, shopping bags. Mm. So actually, solicit for shopping bags. We've seen some supermarket who will donate to us thousands of shopping bags. Wow. We have people who will religiously keep their shopping bags ah. from supermarket they will mm. keep and when it's about a hundred they will mm. come and give to us so mm. we had we actually have a store where we mm. keep shopping bags purely mm. shopping bags mm. of different supermarkets mm. and what happens is that when we are bagging the food when the volunteers are bagging the food they have it in mind that when the people come mm. they want them to proudly be able to carry the food on the streets going yes. back to their if they come as though they have gone to shop. Shop, yes. <laughs> we don't yeah. want them to as though mm. there's a food bank bag. Yes, that, yes, that yes. For the food yeah. bank. No, no. We want mm. them to have the dignity of the fact mm. that I am going or I am coming back from shopping. Amazing. And that is a very big thing because it helps them to hold their heads up. Mm. It helps them hopeful. It helps them to have the assurance that tomorrow is going to be a better day. So, so we have that with ordinary people, with regular people who come to donate food and who come to donate all those other things that we rely upon. Now, we also have people, um, like we heard earlier on from, from the volunteer coordinator, um, who come from their places of work. Yes. People actually de determined to come and do their community service with mm. us, um, mm. corporate service from company, and we have about at least close to about 80, 80 wow. different companies uh, <laughs> or, or corporate organization or, or, or things like that who come to mm. give their time to us from Glaxo, um, wow. Big Bang, you know, wow. to, 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 to banks, different mm. banks, you know, to, to the diff law firms, mm -hmm. uh, students, you know, from the colleges, yes. from the universities, uh, from secondary schools, mm -hmm. different people who come to us and yeah. that's what makes the project a massive operation that mm. has to be centrally coordinated to yeah. achieve central goals. So mm. there's a lot that goes in there. And mm. one of the things that certainly um, is a plus for us is that we have got to be on top of the game by the grace of God to ensure that we are not only willing to do something, we're doing it in a way that it gives credibility yes. to the love of God and also, it also gives credibility to the fact that we're doing it to serve people and to make sure that they do not in any way have their heads low, mm. that they are being in any way treated any differently. So, mm. so that is very, very important to us. And we got that jealously, mm. uh, everything that we do. Yeah. Thanks so much. I mean, I, I think um, I, I, a lot of people have actually mentioned that in the, in the chat box. I think... Um, what really, really, really grips me is that aspect of, you know, everybody walking away with a shopping bag that is not branded healing the food bag. Because, I mean, I mean, that will really, really damage um, or affect adversely, you know, people's um, self-esteem. Because the truth is that life happens <laughs> to everyone um, at some point in time. Uh, and so that, that's, that's really so encouraging. Now, if, if we do have questions, um, you can put that in the, in the chat room. And I already have a question uh, from Yetunde Oluwatui. And she's asking, how do you identify the recipients, uh, the beneficiaries, beneficiaries who really, the really is in, is in caps, 
who really need the resources? Is there like an application process, a sudden process? And I think that's a very beautiful question. So I'd like to, to hear well, you. I was expecting that question to come. I wish I had been touched on it earlier on. I mean, one of the good things about the food bank is we as an organization, as a church, and as a, as, as a charity that runs this project, we are mindful of the fact that we need to deliver this food to people who genuinely need it. Mm. And why, what, what the process, and we, we are a seeded project um, from the Trust of Trust, who is a central network body that runs the whole project mm. and the way that they have defined it and designed the operations is for us to engage and also operate alongside with um with regulatory authorities and statutory authorities so we have the council we have the job centers we have the housing department we have gp surgeries we have mm. people who are who serve as our voucher partners and what mm. happened that these are people who regularly come across people who need food every day mm. who are at the rock bottom position in their lives who mm. are going through trying times so they regularly come across them mm. so we have collaborated with these people to give them the vouchers of the healing them food bank mm. so we deposit these vouchers to them Mm -hmm. And when they come across these people by assessing them, so maybe somebody came to come and ask, I mean, do process about maybe for their health at the GP center or do, I mean, at the housing department or at the job centers, but they have, they are going through trying times. So the people who have assessed them who know this one genuinely needs it. Yeah. They will do a voucher to them and then mm -hmm. they will say, go to the Hillingham Food Bank. And like mm -hmm. I said, we have all together nine distribution centers across the borough. Mm. They can go to any of the ones that are nearest to them. They will present the vouchers when they get there. And for us, when we, when we receive these vouchers, apart from engaging with them when we're still doing physical contact, getting to know them, getting to ask them a bit of questions, um, if there's any other thing we could do, mm. we take vouchers from them and without in any way judging them, without in any way asking a probing question, we give them the food according to what they are qualified to receive. Mm. So it's not for us to determine who actually is um, qualified to receive it, is to honor the vouchers that have been issued right. to them, mm. them to us at any of our centers. And that has worked so well for us because it has taken away that cumbersome and very trying um, situation of having to go through do you need it or do you qualify for it? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, oh. yeah. I, I think I think um, it's it's wonderful that you already I mean absolved of that responsibility. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it helps to focus on on that um, on that I mean great task of even getting the, the food across of and mobilizing, um, getting the food together and uh, coordinating the volunteer uh, response and all of that. Now, so one other question I, I mean that I'd like to ask you is I know in all these years, uh, in all these 11 to 12 years of, of running um, the Healing New Food Bank, there obviously must be uh, some, I mean, lots of interesting stories. Um, I mean, you've already shared some about people who were beneficiaries now coming to serve as volunteers. So, I mean, I, I like you to share maybe the, maybe there's a particular one that really, really holds dear to your heart. That um, you know, you know, because sometimes those kind of stories, even maybe when you want to pack it all in, you know, remember that story that no, 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 <laughs> I'll just keep going. You know, so maybe I don't know if you have one of such stories to to share with us today. Pastor Wally, I don't, I don't know how much time we have because I can share stories all day today. No, we, I mean, it's, it's, it's one hour program and we okay. still have like uh, 20 minutes. Okay, all right. Let, let, me, <laughs> let me see early days. Right. One of the most classic stories for me that really did it for us yes. was 2009, exactly 100 days after we started off. What happened then was we, we had a, a meeting with the, with, the, with, the, with the mayor then yeah. And on that day, we had a gentleman who was pushing his, uh, um, his daughter in a pram with the wife. And they rushed into the food bank where we were using then as our storage. And they said, please, we need, we need milk. We need milk to give to this 
I mean, this our daughter, that the, the, the girl hasn't had milk for 48 hours. Mm. And when we asked who this guy was, apparently the guy was in the army mm. and he had gone to Iraq mm. to go and serve as, um, as a soldier for the United mm. Kingdom. Mm. Now he had returned from Iraq and he was decommissioned because of some health issues. Right. When he was decommissioned, he was paid off and he was a young guy. I think mm. I'm maybe around 20 something. He must have blown his money. He must have maybe spent it, maybe a little unwise or whatever it is. That is not for us to judge. But he found himself on the street and he doesn't have money. Mm. He doesn't have food. Where he was living, he was petting with somebody. And here he was with a daughter that was starving. So he came in, we gave the, 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 the girl some milk to, 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 to drink. Mm. We gave them some food. And the mayor was listening to all these things going on. Mm. And the mayor at that point in time made a comment that has, I mean, it crystallized my mind as to what this project is supposed to do. Right. He said he cannot be in a society where a soldier would go to Iraq and not mm. die at war, mm. but come to his own town mm. and then die of hunger on the streets. <laughs> so he said that do not happen. Mm. So at that day, that made, that information and that story went wild. Mm. The local newspaper carried it. Mm. We were on the front page of the newspaper, 100 days that we started off, mm. and then people were calling us from all over London to say, Oh, we heard this happen in your community. Mm. We heard it happen. How have you? So the person within two weeks not only got a job, got mm. a house, and got fixed up. So that <laughs> guy was fixed up totally. And that mm. was the iconic story that brought about the eventuality of how people know that the Illinois Food Bank has come to stay in the end. <laughs> if I come to this time during the pandemic, yes. one of one of the ladies who came to volunteer, I mean, she was fellowed at work and then she came to spend her time at the food bank mm -hmm. to come and give some work. Now, right. on one of those days that she came, she was working at the certain area where we were shown earlier on. And all of a sudden, she saw one of her friends walking through the door of the food bank. Mm -hmm. She told the friend who was also coming to volunteer mm -hmm. Or knowing that the friend, very good friend of ours, or knowing that the friend was actually coming to present a voucher to receive food. Mm. When she heard it, she just broke down. The two of them broke down. All mm. the volunteers wow. around broke down, started mm. crying. That you just never know yes. who are going through. Because these were this these were friends, mm. and she said, I didn't know you were going through this sort of thing. Mm. If I wasn't here, I would never have known. Yes. And just totally was gobsmacked that mm. a bosom friend, mm. a very good friend was going through this kind of situation. So, so I believe that there are people around us who are going through very trying times yeah. that don't know. And it would take us to go beyond an extra mile mm. to just intervene. Yeah. Maybe God will lead us, God will guide us and to just say that how can I help you? How can I be of a support to you in mm. all that we are going through? Those mm. are those are stories that, I mean, I can go on and on to share so much more <laughs> stories because we have tons of them. Every yeah. single day, we have stories that have really helped us to continue this project. Uh, yeah, I think I think what, what we'll do with those stories, we'll, we'll, you'll definitely write a book or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, won't, it won't be me writing the story. I mean, the, the volunteers, I mean, you heard Pastor Vine there. Pastor yeah. Vine, I mean, I'm trying to tell stories. But survive, <laughs> storyteller. I mean, it's a story. No, and I know no, I mean, the, a lot to share about how God has been so gracious and yeah. um, was. No, I think the good. I, I think the good thing about that kind of book would be that Pastor Vine will be the be the narrator for the audio book. So, it, it, <laughs> absolutely, it will be it will be splendid. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> Is, is, is prepared to go get that done anyway. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, and the truth is that it, it needs, that book needs to go out because um, 
people need to know um, the that this can be done, that it is necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and it, it needs to go. So uh, this is a challenge for you. Maybe you maybe that book should be ready by the next anniversary or something. Well, why not? <laughs> All right, cool. So we have a question by Lisa Hot. Um, and she, she's asking, how many times can people keep receiving food yeah. through the voucher scheme? Okay, um, the, the, by design, by design, right. people are entitled to receive food three times. Mm. Three times of about six to seven days each. So okay. we will get them, pack some food for them that can last them to about six to seven days, about a week. Mm. And they are able to return, mm. th I mean, three times. However, mm. it's not that when they come anymore, I mean, within those three times, mm. what we expect is that we will have been able to figure out how to further help them. Because when they come, one of the things we also engage in doing is we have a referral system. Right. The referral system, what it does is that we're able to look at what are they going through and mm. what other thing can we use to help them mm. apart from giving them food mm. because we just don't actually want them to keep coming mm. and come and be receiving handouts we want mm. them to get off the belt of yeah. receiving mm. and in fact be able to contribute later on and be part of the goodwill that we're giving to people so so people can receive three times but when they come more than three times we then intrinsically look at how to um, look for other ways that we can support them. Mm -hmm. I mean, more, I mean, we, we take it more serious, if I can put it that way, and mm -hmm. to refer them and to know exactly what it, maybe they are actually, uh, maybe they need to speak with somebody who mm -hmm. will then figure out maybe there's much more than things that we need to do to help them. So, so we, 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 can, we go through that and we have seen a lot of success doing this. The referral system helps so well People have ended up in the in in counseling, in mm. debt debt counseling, yeah. in different kind of areas, mm. job center, referral, mm. medical areas, and different things that can help them. So we, we get that sorted out. Yeah, if I, you just answered the question because I was just about to ask, you know, which kind of agencies do you refer them to? But you mentioned the, the job centers, the maybe the debt uh, counseling um, agencies and all of that. So. Yeah, thank, thank. I mean, thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, well, I mean, we we're going to bring this to a close very soon. And um, like I mentioned, if you do have um, any questions, you can put that in the chat box. And of course, this has been recorded, so because we're going to um, clean up the recording and you know put it on YouTube and basically just you know share it uh, far and wide. Uh, yet today is asking another question, what are the practical steps to start something similar so that, uh, also what should come first? Create a website, branding, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor, you want to, you want to you want do that? Uh, one of the things that we have found out is, uh, even though we're the first food bank in London now, we have, I mean, about 80, if I'm correct, I mean, certainly different numbers of food banks of mm -hmm. different cities within London, and then, of course, in other areas beyond the, the, the London area. Mm -hmm. However, to start a food bank, uh, it depends on wherever you are. One of the things that we would like to encourage people, because it's, just, it's not the starting that is important, yeah. it's a day to know that you are actually serving a particular need that mm. is not available. So mm. I will encourage that you need to look at the need. If the need was there, mm -hmm. uh, that the project is good does not mean that you want to just start it. So if there is, if there's a need for it, then you can go ahead. We can actually make re referral system to people. If it's within the UK, we can make referral to people who can help you through the process of starting it. If it is an area where um, there are an, there's an existing project of this sort, either with the food bank itself through Trust to Trust or maybe other organizations who have similar projects, 
I would say that it's, it's always good to collaborate and mm. join and join force to yeah. make it better mm. rather, rather than maybe duplicating processes mm. and then sucking out um, efforts and resources that will have been very useful to one another. So that is what I'm going to But If anybody wants to specifically ask questions, they can send us email or send us, you know, um, so, I mean, maybe give us a call and then we'll be able to refer to them and get some details across to them in a way that um, it will help them as we get along. Get along. Cool. cool. So let me ask uh, a, a tricky question here. You know, um, when people go for, for job interviews and they ask the question, um, where do you see yourself in five years' time? Somebody said, well, uh, with, with COVID, you know, you don't ask that kind of question anymore because <laughs> we, all, we all just know what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, if you ask that question in um, at the start of 2020, um, both the interviewer and the and interviewee <laughs> will certainly be at loss. But I mean, having said that, um, what, what kind of plans? Um, I mean, what do you envisage for the Hillary Food Bank um, in the months and, and years to come? Yeah, I mean, our, our original plan when we started off is that we do not want anybody anybody at all within our borough to mm. go to bed hungry. Mm. We don't want it. We don't think it should happen. We don't think it is right for that to happen. So mm. we don't want anybody to go to bed hungry. However, mm. we have long moved away from that in the sense that we still have that as a, as a blueprint of what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. But there are so many more issues that people are going through mm. in the society today. So we, we actually are engaging in what we call modern food different mm -hmm. things that we engage in. We do some trainings. We do we do enlightenment, I mean, campaign. We do encouraging, you know, um, um, I mean, I mean, things that can support the family system mm -hmm. and support the community. One, mm -hmm. of the, one of the important things that we have done over the years that we, we sort of stopped a, for a while because of um, pr premises problem was we, we offer some coaching classes Right. We figured out that the people who are likely to use the food bank are people who are from the low-income family. Mm -hmm. And when they are low-income family, it is not only food that is the issue. We have, mm -hmm. I mean, their children will be will not be will not benefit from the best of education. Right. Uh, not have best of health care. Mm -hmm. They will not. So many things are going to be be, be an issue around them. So yeah. we're looking for areas to support them. So we have what we call, for example, John joint effort tuition mm. that we run within the King's Row Center Network. And what mm. we do with joint effort tuition is that we get professionals who are engineers, who are medical doctors, who are accountants, who are, you know, who are bankers, who can teach some of these courses, some of these mm. subjects, English, math, biology, wow. chemistry, all those things. And we get them and we started, we started off what we call a Saturday school for them. And we will get these volunteers to come religiously on a Saturday morning mm. to impact good knowledge mm. and study <clears throat> ideas to these children mm. who just needed a little more push right. for them, especially from the ethnic minority who perhaps for English, English is not their first language mm -hmm. and they're struggling to understand because if English is going wrong, then every other thing will go wrong. Yeah. So if you can enhance them with English and numeracy, you find that they can do better in their mm. education. So mm. we offer things like that. We offer vocational training, um, which we want to also go back to, um, where people can engage in different things, you know, like computer, how to go get literacy with computer, yeah. and all good things that can make people to settle in and to get better. So in five years' time, I see the Hillary Food Bank becomes a hub of you know of transforming people's lives yeah. in a productive life that will be engaging that will be supportive that will also make people to be transformed in their mm. social ladder in the society from yeah. not having to people who are actually giving and adding value to other people's lives yeah amazing amazing so i mean that i mean what what you really talked about now with all this um interventions, uh, whether it's with education and even in interfacing with all the other agencies, like you had mentioned before, really helps to what I would call 
to de-sustain the hunger because if, if, if the hunger is sustained, they will keep coming back. But uh, like you said, it's very important to get them off the belt so that, um, first of all, for their own benefit, um, yeah. for their own um, well-being, uh, and then also to be able to get other people in. And, and of course, uh, as you've seen and as you've said, uh, once they get off that belt, um, they themselves will now be in a position to to help other people, maybe by volunteering with the with the food bank or just uh, doing some other good um, elsewhere. Um, thankfully, Pastor Tony has put uh, the details for the food bank. So we have, um, I mean, it's available to everyone. Uh, also, what we'll do is when we um, put this up on, on YouTube, um, all of these details will be there. And of course, we'll send an email to everybody um, to let you know when it's online. And then you can also, also share, share this resource with um, anyone and everyone that you think would would uh, benefit uh, from this. So um, I think we've come to, to the end of this, uh, Pastor. Today, any 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 last words? Um, if I'm going to say anything, as 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 a, I mean, of course, you know, I'm a pastor, and mm -hmm. one of the things that is endeared to my heart the most is that I believe, as a matter of principle, that there's nobody that is not gifted in life. Mm -hmm. When life happened to any of us, it can take anything away and everything away from us. Yes. But does not run, we must not run away from the fact that everybody has giftings. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that is very close to my heart is when people are down, when they are broken, and when they are falling, and when they are on the ground, I do not look down on them thinking, oh, this one is useless, mm -hmm. this one is hopeless. I always look for how can I find a way by the grace of God to help this person yeah. to reconnect back to what I know is certainly in them, mm -hmm. what I know that God has packaged in them. And mm -hmm. if only we can get that going, we can actually make them to become people who will begin to add and give to other people in the future. So, so it is for us to see how to reconnect people back to life mm -hmm. when they have been broken and affected, like it does happen to all of us at yeah. some point. And I know that we can come out of it. And, um, you know, we want anybody and everybody there who can be of support, who can be of help to make this vision and any such around them to prosper, to please do that. You will certainly be in the center of God's will for our lives. Thank you. Okay. Um, one last question from, from here today. I mean, the reason why here today keeps asking these questions is because she said she's, uh, I'm sure you can see her smiling there. She's in Toronto, in Canada, and right. she's working with a team to start a foundation, and she believes that um, this will be a big part of what they are planning to do. So her question is, um, how do you coordinate the receiving of donations from corporate organizations and, and individuals alike? Oh, I mean, I think one of the things that corporate organizations wants to know is they want to know how credible you are. Mm. They don't mind giving to you at first, but when they give to you at first, they want to know that you have used it mm -hmm. for what you ask it for. And mm -hmm. when you do that, and you can show them that this is what it has done, and mm. this is the result that has happened from it, yeah. I tell them they want to give more. They, they actually have money put aside, mm. and resources put aside to do this good work. So, yeah. so I that credibility is very important mm -hmm. and if they're going to do credibility accountability is very important responsibility of what you are doing is very crucial when you get these two things in place and then you do not i mean we receive a lot of food and it will be irresponsible of us to receive those food and then let them go to waste that's why we painstakingly go through each of those items date by date to make sure that we push them out before they are, I mean, they, they, they run out of lifespan mm. because that is what gives us the opportunity. We have food now in stock that is going up to 2023. Mm. And then we need to make sure that the one that is going out today is not the 2023, is the one that is going to expire maybe in two months' time or in three months' time. That is yeah. how we, so it, it needs a central coordination and you, you cannot go wrong if you get it right. I mean, to make sure you get it right. Mm. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Day. Um, once again, I, I want to 
really commend you for I mean the great work you're doing at um, Healing the Food Bank and the team, Pastor Vine and all the volunteers. Um, the truth of the matter is that uh, I mean what you're doing is is so valuable that you really can't put any 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 worth on it. You know, um, and one of the things I say to people is that when you do when you do this kind of good. Um, First of all, I mean, the Bible says that we should pray every day, but I often, I often tell people that, first of all, that's impossible. But a good way to get that done is to just do good to a lot of people so that they can actually help you to fulfill that, that role. They'll be praying for you every day, so. That means you have sourced, you have sourced some of the prayer. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you know, so, um, so want to thank everybody in the team. want to thank you as well for, I want to thank Pastonia as well, your family. I want to thank you for staying true to that vision, um, staying the course, even in the midst of uh, being, being discouraged. And we, we just pray that um, God himself will perfect everything that, that, that concerns you and uh, the Healing Food Bank and take it from, from this present step, which you, which you are right now, um, to even you know, a greater stead. Um, in Jesus' name. Can, yeah, so, can, I, can I say that? Yeah, I mean, go ahead. It, will, it will be, it will be, it will not be right for me to end this session right. without amending um, the brethren and the fellowship at the Kingsborough Church. Yes. I mean, from the very onset, from the very first day, mm. the Kingsborough Church have been an enormous, enormous mm. support mm. from the onset because. When the when we when we talked about it from the first day that we wanted to do it and yeah. it was more or less not supported, the mm. Kingsborough Church sacrificially, you know, gave themselves in mm. money, in time, mm. in space, and they still do it till now. We have department mm. who will come and volunteer a whole day, mm. a whole time, and mm. just come and give support and mm. give the time. We have people who come and give food. So mm. I really want to thank God for the family church in, in Kingsborough for mm. all that they do to do, uh, to give support and give mm. value to the lives of our community. It yeah. goes a way, and that is what makes me so proud mm. of the church at Kingsborough that God is helping us to do what he commanded us to do so rightly. Thank you so much. I'm proud to be part of Kingsborough too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so this is where we'll knock it off tonight. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for being part of this, um, of this session. And uh, want to say enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you so much, Pastor Today, and everybody. Thank you very much. All right. Really. all right, God bless you all. And uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye.